So my name is Sergey, and today I'm going to talk about creating the React uh, serverless checkout form as the presentation states here. And this is quite interesting experience even for me because we're going to scratch the surface of the uh, Microsoft Azure as the cloud provider. And it's important for me actually to develop because uh, I come from AWS and GCP and right now it's I believe it's time for me to try out the Azure services. And believe me, uh, the experience was not so bad. So, agenda for today's presentation. We're going to talk about the problem definition uh, that which we are going to resolve today. We're going to talk about a little bit about the solution and solution will be actually combined from four steps and we're going to create a serverless function app. We're going to create a Stripe function app. Uh, for payments, we're going to use the Stripe, which is a payment platform. Uh, we're going to use also React.js checkout component um, to integrate with our uh, serverless function on Azure and also integrate with the Stripe function. And of course, uh, as the conclusion, we're going to submit our payment and see in the real life how the flow goes through all the services. Um, we're also going to talk briefly about the ideas and improvements, and we're going to share the useful links, and of course, there will be a Q&A session. So let's get started. And first of all, I would like to say that there are times when any app uh, should be monetized, and uh, there are a number of ways to become profitable. Uh, by accepting the cash, uh, it's a straightforward way and it's more direct. There are also uh, other possibilities like, for example, accepting the Bitcoins, accepting, for example, Google Pay, Apple Pay. Um, this is not a presentation about these services. We're going to talk uh, directly about the accepting the cash uh, using the card payments. So there are always multiple solutions to the problem, but today we're going to uh, investigate one of the possible solution and we're going to set up a serverless function using Microsoft Azure cloud service. We're going to talk to Stripe API and connect it to checkout form using DirectJS application. Um, of course, this might sound daunting, but actually it's pretty straightforward. So let's dig in. And uh, first of all, let's talk about the serverless. So as you can see right now, I have already my account for the Microsoft Azure and let's uh, sign in. And uh, there is a quite a good uh, documentation from the Microsoft Azure. Uh, and this covers actually creating the Azure functions using the JavaScript. And there is a huge developer guide with examples that I highly suggest to and recommend to follow and just to give it a try to try to build some serverless functions. And uh, the promise of serverless is to spend less time setting up the maintenance server and, for example, to buy some hosting or etc. Um, instead, we need a function that runs certain code and when the request is made, it will provide you a chunk of functionality. So for this reason, people may refer to this as the function as a service. And this is really useful because you pay only for what you use and rather than large containers set up in uh, some particular virtual machines, um, that might you might not want entire time. Uh, also, primary focus is just to code what you need instead of babysitting the server, and which really appeals to a lot of people who would like to get application up and running quickly. So, um, function as a server isn't always the right tool for the job. And for example, it's really useful for small executions. But if you would like to have some process that might hold up resources, ton of computations, and it, it, uh, normally you would go with the servers uh, because it will be more efficient. So what we're going to make is a perfect use case for going serverless. Uh, and we're going to use the Stripe checkout, which is um, another payment platform that I use, uh, use uh, to uh, receive the payments. And uh, with this Stripe checkout, it's pretty seamless to integrate with uh, both client and server side. Uh, however, today we're going to talk about the client uh, side for that. And we are going to use the Microsoft Azure actually as a client side, uh, as a server side, I'm sorry, and client side will be presented by the React.js component. Right, so first of all, on this portal, because uh, the navigation of the portal is pretty easy, there is also a search uh, box. So we are going to search for the function and there is a function app which is specifically designated to create the serverless functions. And uh, we might need to add another function. So let's create a demo React.js 
function. Okay. And we're going to use the resources, uh, the, the new resource, uh, like which is the same name as the our application. Okay, so it's loading. It might take some time. So actually, uh, the downside of using the Azure, it because it has a little bit of the um, latency between the request responses, and you have to wait for some operations to be completed. So let's. Okay, let's try to create it one more time. Right. Well, as always, uh, first you create presentation and everything works unless it goes to the direct demo and at the demo everything is go out of the control. Uh, so I don't know why it's not creating any app. Uh, don't worry. Uh, I believe that uh, I haven't deleted the previous one. So um, I have already prepared some a new function that we can use as a reference. Unfortunately, due to some uh, problems with the servers, we'll not be able to start from the scratch. So this is already some function that was pre-populated with some values. So I believe it will be ready to open, right? And let's take a look at the body of the function. Uh, so It's already created serverless function, and as you can see, we are referenced the index JSON, in the index JS. I'm sorry, and uh, there are quite a few requirements, but actually, this is a normal JavaScript code that you already are aware of, and uh, this is already code to integrate with the Stripe API. So uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about the Stripe API then. Um, so maybe it's even better, so we'll sa save some time. So I'm going to log into my account. And on the Stripe dashboard, there is al already a lot of information and some dashboards that show you some information about your payments. What is great about the Stripe is that from the beginning, it uh, also show you the test data. So you're not going to be uh, out of charge. So it provides you some uh, test accounts, actually developers account that you can monitor your requests, for example, and what are the errors for particular HTTP methods. So for example, and what is the distribution of the errors? And um, what is more important for us is to get an the actual API key for testing uh, the integration with the Stripe API. So Stripe API has a really, really great um, API uh, reference. And particularly, we're going to create a customer. And to create a customer using the Stripe API to proceed with our payment, there are some numbers of fields that are required, but actually we're going to use only email uh, and uh, the so-called source. So source might be a token or source ID, and this is actually the source of the payment. So uh, you might think about this as someone else's card that is ready to be charged. And Stripe API is going to take this source and proceed with the payment to our card, which will be attached to our Stripe API. Uh, right now, for the testing purposes, we have already test date and we have publisher key and uh, secret key. We're going to use both uh, right now to be able to communicate from our serverless function on the Microsoft Azure. We're going to require this serverless key. So uh, let's try to roll new keys and expire previous immediately. Right, and I'm pretty sure I would like to reveal the keys and let's paste it here. So I would like to elaborate a little bit about the overall application. So as always, we have module export and always, I believe this is a great thing that you can lock step by step to understand uh, if there are some errors where you are at a certain point of time. So uh, we're going to start this down and uh, the good thing about this uh, serverless function is that it can be triggered by HTTP. And uh, whenever you create a new function, it, there will be uh, uh, 
possibility to configure this function. Either you would like to trigger it by HTTP or you're going to trigger it by cron or uh, manually. So we go with HTTP trigger. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, show it right now because again, some problems with the function up creation at all. But uh, bear with me, this is what we're going to use. We're going to use the HTTP trigger. So um, on the other hand, uh, what is great is that uh, to test our function, it can um, have this HTTP trigger uh, using by post or get method, and we're going to go with the post method. And it also requires some data to be passed, so it will um, uh, create a proper uh, test account. So test example com and Stripe token will be used also. And amount of uh, US dollars we'd like to um, charge from our customer. So we're going to check for these parameters if they are valid. And then we're going to, as I said before, we're going to use the Stripe customers API. We're going to create it with email, which is request body uh, like Stripe API that is passed in the request body for the post request. Also, there is a source and we're going to use this Stripe token. And um, there is a caveat uh, here. So uh, initially, when I was starting with the Stripe API, for me, it was a little bit not straightforward. What is the Stripe token? And uh, initially, I thought that it might be a publishable, publishable key. So, but this is not correct. Uh, actually, what we need for this to work is Stripe token, which represents the someone's card or some test card that we can use for the payment. And uh, to uh, go with that, um, let's just see the sources. So uh, there is a quick start on the Stripe.js elements page. And Stripe.js elements page is um, like a helpful uh, modules that you can use on your uh, disposal uh, to build some beautiful smart checkout flows um, user and different payment and checkout methods and if I go here to the elements quick start you will see that there is already some nice uh, form and this is actually a form that allows us to create some fake credit card number together with the validity and CVC number so uh, let's switch for a moment here again so um, let's go to the flow. We have the Stripe uh, customer, we're going to create it. Then this customer can be uh, used to create a charge for this customer and we're going to charge exact the same amount that is passed in the post body request. Uh, there is a description, so simple charge for the DEMA maybe, and the currency might be uh, Euro or USD or some other currencies of other countries. Uh, we're going to stick to uh, dollars and the customer ID. So this customer ID is important because we're going to uh, charge a particular customer. Uh, also, then we are going to finish the Stripe uh, charges and if the response is completed and we are done, we're going to lock uh, that this has been completed. Also, it is always, I believe, good to catch some errors in the middle. And of course, if we miss some of the parameters, there will be uh, proper message to that. So for example, let's try to just uh, send, uh, save and run this um, function. And there will be a nice login message in the console for the Microsoft uh, Azure. So it's processing right now. Right, so there was some uh, information that it's starting going down and it has, inf undefined information, so maybe something is wrong with our code. Uh, overall, it was finished and completed without any uh, error, but we have handled it and the output gives us we are missing something, exactly what we specify in the uh, response. So let's return back these parameters and this token. So I have been talking briefly about how to get this uh, token. So let's do it right now. Uh, this card number is the uh, testing number that is valid for testing. So for example, it's already recognized that this is a Visa card and the expiration date is completely optional. Just pass some data in the future and CVC and actually I can provide my real zip account and submit the payment. So this gives us the successful token which associated with this card. Um, 
bear with me. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to create the same um, uh, Stripe payment card uh, UI on the React.js. For now, let's check our integration with the Stripe API. So we got this token and let's put this token here for the Stripe token, which is going to be again used um, to create our customer. And let's run it. Right, so we have already output, so this has been completed. And let's right now, since we're using Stripe API and it was succeeded, let's go to the dashboard. And what we're interested in, in actually are the logs. So uh, you see that uh, uh, just in time we have some logs. So we have obtained the uh, customer uh, token. So there was, let's try to elaborate about the request. So there was a request with this number, with hidden CVC number and expiration as we set it down. And what we received in terms is the ID of the card and uh, with all this information, which is legible to be, uh, legible to be a checkout. So some amount can be uh, charged from that card. And if I go back, there will be a customer creation, of course. Uh, so there was a customer with this uh, email and here is his card or token, if you will, uh, with all that information. And lastly, in the logs, we can see that there is a charge, which we actually uh, interested in because it's some, somehow that we are getting money from that customer. And as you can see, we are charging for this amount and that was a description of the payment and the currency was US dollars and the customer ID for our uh, exposal. Here it is, like his, uh, like, um, semi ID, I would say. So that works fine and this is great. And uh, at this point of time, we just finished uh, the first um, part of this solution. So we create the serverless function up, actually two parts, and we create the Stripe function up that integrates with the Stripe. Uh, next one will be the React.js component creation. I would like to elevate your attention uh, because there is another uh, reference for the Stripe elements. So we have been uh, seeing this uh, logo and etc. But uh, there is a great and nice tutorial how to create uh, Stripe elements in React. Actually, there are some many um, um, guides how to create it in React and Vue.js and whatsoever in bare JavaScript, for example, vanilla JavaScript. We're going to stick to the React.js guide. Uh, for, oh yeah, I I'm totally uh, forgot about one more important thing. And that is all fine and dandy if we create this Stripe API token by hand. But what is more important, for example, if multiple people are working on the same source code for this um, serverless function, it's quite important to um, actually have it somewhere in the source um, code committed. So for example, I have already off screen created the Stripe serverless function and it actually follows the same rules as we have been uh, using it manually. Uh, so for example, if I would like to view the files that are currently in my uh, folder for these applications, you will see the definition of the function. Uh, so let me just hide this guy. So there are some uh, default values for this function and how it will uh, be triggered. So it will be HTTP trigger and what methods are allowed. Also, there is a body of that function in index.js. There is a package log file, which is important because um, for this function to uh, work, actually, we have to require the Stripe and Stripe can be obtained from the, uh, from actually from the NPM repository. So previously I have installed it um, using uh, the NPM command. So NPM install uh, Stripe and save, and that was actually already succeeded. That's why you can see in the, um, package JSON log file, there is a reference to the Stripe uh, module. And node modules, of course, which were created. Uh, right now, uh, let's see how we can actually use the deployment for that function instead of typing it in the uh, editor. And there is a deployment center available for this function among 
uh, as other things like SSL and networking and some authentications maybe if you need. But uh, let's see deployment centers uh, section. So for this, um, okay, I don't know what's going on with today with the Microsoft Azure, but yeah. So oh, there are some uh, options to be deployed and we can uh, use the Azure repos service, Bitbucket and from probably from local Git, which is should be accessible from the remote. But we're going to stick to the GitHub. I already uh, sync it with my account on the GitHub. So as you can see right, right here. And let's continue with this account. Uh, there is a possibility to use the building service or use the Azure pipeline service. And we are going to go with the build service because we just need to fetch the source and apply to our function. So let's continue. And uh, all right, so let's try to configure it. And I will check my personal account. And right now it will fetch for repositories. And here I would like to go to this Stripe serverless function, which already have all the code here, for example, for our body and etc. And I'm going to use the branch master and I'm going to continue. So everything is configured, so let's finish it. But there is a nice uh, alert pop-up uh, dialog here that is actually reporting you about the process of deployment. So it was successfully deployed and let's wait for data to be fetched. Right, so a few more time, spending, come on, you can work faster. Right, so it sees the uh, last commit from the repository. So as you can see, I just roll out the keys and it actually show me the correct uh, commit. And if I switch back to the HTTP trigger, The code is already there, but we just need to wait a little bit. All right. So we're going to uh, to trigger this function. We actually need some URI, and we're going to copy this URI and we're going to use it uh, later on with the integration from the React JS. Uh, one more little thing, and we can uh, jump to the creation of the checkout form on the React JS, is that I'm going to go to the platform features. I think it should be okay here and the platform features. And we have to configure course, of course. It is already configured. So uh, as long, these are the defaults, but I have actually added um, uh, my server with together with my local host and the port when it will be running. And that is it for, for to be uh, able to integrate with this um, service function on the Azure portal. Right, so let's dive in right now into creation of the of the uh, React JS component. And for that, uh, we're going to, of course, use the React app and we're going to use the Yarn Create React app. And we're going to uh, name it as Elements Example. Um, we already have this Elements Example, so I would like to name it probably Example Dima. Um, all right, no worries. I think that I just need to have the proper node, but I believe, yeah, here I have it. Right, so let's uh, again try to create it and it resolve dependencies whatsoever. And to be able to integrate with React Stripe Elements, this nicely UI, to be able to create this uh, checkout form um, from the React, we have to also use another uh, repository, which is React Stripe Elements. So. There is a React Stripe Elements, and this is a component for the Stripe and Stripe Elements, specifically for React. So let's try to use it and let's, let's try to edit. But uh, first of all, switch to the Elements demo and yarn at uh, React Stripe uh, Elements. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Great. Uh, we have already some uh, app that was set up. So let's try to add some logic there. And I'm going to open this application in the Atom editor. And as you might see, this is a simple uh, skeleton from the React, Create React app. And most of the things we are going to delete, but first of all, uh, let's switch to the uh, index.js. And this is kind of important. So uh, whenever you, you would like to integrate with React.js, it's important to include the library. It's important to include the library uh, and we're going to use it. And the library name is, as you might know, jstripe.com, and this is the version of the library we're going to integrate. And uh, it, for PCI compliance purposes, you must load this uh, library directly from Stripe server at runtime. So it can be cached as the node module or something. So you cannot install it from the NPM or bundle it to your application. Uh, it should be used like this. All right, so we have this function. And right now, um, Let's uh, create our component. So I'm going to create a new component in the source directory, which will be called uh, checkout uh, form GS. And I'm going to import, as always, like uh, React. Uh, so React and actually the component uh, from React, sorry. And I'm going to also import from React Stripe elements uh, two needed elements. So the first one will be the card element. And I'm going to also import the what's so called inject stripe. And this is a wrapper around the component uh, that is needed. And I'm going to elaborate a little bit uh, later about that. So there is a stripe elements that we have already installed using yarn. Um, okay. Uh, sorry. Right, and uh, I'm going to create a class component actually for this form, and I'm going to extend it from the component. And uh, we will need to have a constructor because we will need to um, pass the props to that. Uh, so let's uh, pass the props. And as by convention, we should uh, invoke uh, super with the pass props. And uh, for this uh, uh, checkout form, I'm going to create the submit function and I'm going to uh, bind it to the context. So I'm going to bind it to this. And of course we need to create it. So let's create this async uh, submit uh, function. Um, uh, some environment, it's not really needed. Uh, we'll come back here for the submit uh, button. Uh, let's right now finish this component by defining the render function and uh, we'll be good to go with that. So uh, I would like to have a div uh, with, the, sorry, with the class name of checkout that is important for the styling. And uh, maybe paragraph and uh, maybe something like, uh, would you like to have a purchase? Sounds well. And of course, since we included this card element, let's uh, also use this card element. Uh, maybe I will just use it like here. And the button uh, that we are going to use for submission and on click event I would like to use this submit that we already defined in the constructor and yeah let's just send it so um, let's complete this guy and put a semicolon and of course let's export this as the default um, checkout form component. Uh, however, if I do this uh, thing, it will not give me much sense in, in terms of um, interfering with the stripe. So I will need to take this inject stripe and actually wrap this component uh, with this inject stripe. What it do um, 
under the curtain is that it will take this component and prepare it to be used as the Stripe integration component. So from that component, we're going to be able to get access to the Stripe methods. Right, so that sounds fine and dandy. Um, again, we need to uh, also, I believe, we need to do a little bit uh, clear the default app.js. Um, so here I'm going to just uh, use the component from React and I'm going to also, I believe it's important, I'm going to um, import the elements um, from, from the same React uh, Stripe elements. Oh, oh, yeah, so I will need also uh, the Stripe provider, right? And uh, I don't need this guy. And also let's import our checkout form, which we just created. Go checkout form from, uh, checkout form, <laughs> of course. And uh, this is the functional component. So let's uh, convert it to the class-based component. So I would like class to, to extend the uh, component. And uh, yeah, let's just get rid of this guy. And let's, uh, re let's define the render. And this should return, I believe, so we have this Stripe provider and Stripe provider uh, is actually require us to provide our component, uh, the token that it can be used for integration. And as I said before, we have some tokens provided by the Stripe API. We have already used the secret key to uh, push and create some users and uh, push the charge to the Stripe API. Right now, we'll need to use this publishable key and I'm going to take this guy and copy it uh, and actually um, use this Stripe provider as the component. And I'm going to provide this API key um, as here. And uh, yeah, let's just create some simple div uh, as always. Uh, maybe the class name example. And uh, what I need is actually to uh, render this checkout form as well with some uh, nice message. So let's just use H1 and React uh, Stripe uh, elements example for the demo for uh, web UI community demo. And uh, as per documentation um, for the Stripe elements, uh, we should use the Stripe, um, see, I think it's, um, is it? Um, yeah, so uh, I believe that I just missed the link. All right, so uh, as per uh, agreement, when you use the React Stripe elements, uh, you should uh, get the element, uh, and this element is going to um, group all the forms or check out, for example, check out forms, everything uh, that uh, customer created and is referenced as the one group element. So I have already uh, used this element, so let's paste it here. And inside, we're just going to put our checkout form. So this elements from the React Stripe element is actually, I would say the group uh, holder that will bind all the logic that is inside this, uh, this checkout form uh, injected with the Stripe elements together. So that Stripe will understand, so for example, if we'd like to have some kind of uh, checkout form, maybe purchase form, maybe uh, purchase uh, form, maybe some kind of uh, validator bef uh, and whatsoever, it will bound it, it all together so they will have access to each other. But right now we just only need the checkout form 
because we haven't created anything uh, else, right? And we export this as default. Let's try to uh, run this application actually, and then we're going to back to our submit button. So, and uh, yarn, yes, yarn start actually. I think it's. So the application will run on the port 3000 and let's see if we have some problems or errors. Maybe we need to fix something. Sorry. So the React, okay. And uh, yes, so sorry for this typo from, of course, and Uh, right. Right. I believe that it was not saved. Yes. Right now it should work fine. Right. So here is our uh, React page without uh, any cards right now information. And uh, well, yeah, so it's, it already can recognize the visa and etc. And for example, I believe that MasterCard is 51, yes. Um, but uh, it's always good to work with something that looks uh, a little bit pretty. So uh, for that, let's try to style a little bit this uh, thing. And um, yeah, so let's try to style it. I have already prepared the off screen the index uh, CSS configuration, so I'm going to just uh, paste it here and uh, I'm going to import it as always. Right, and you see it's already like more powerful, I would say, and uh, let's see uh, what we can do next. So we already can uh, provide some numbers and for example, the same CV and zip code, but send doesn't really work at all. So if we try to send, nothing going on. So let's populate our submit button and actually this is quite important because this is where the logic for the stripe integration and uh, actually integration with the um, azure comes together uh, so of course to post some data uh, to um, azure i would need some library and you may go with the some fetch or i don't know maybe xml HTTP request but um i would like to go with the, something that is uh, normal I, I believe that is something that is used uh, on daily basis so access so let's uh, try to install um uh, let's try to add access as our dependency right so it's fetching the the configuration and the because this one is already referenced the access, right? That's fine. And uh, to save some time, I'm going to uh, paste the already submit button, a code that I have prepared off screen. So just to save some time because we run out of time a little bit. So it was empty right now, I'm going to paste some code and I'm going to elaborate about, a little bit about this code. So first of all, we need to create a token and uh, with this token, we're going to name it. And this token is going to be uh, used to actually propagate with our uh, post components. So um, here I have to provide for the access, actually the URI where I'm, go I'm going to post this request body with this request headers. And as you might already uh, notice, I'm going to take this from our um, function that we created previously on the Azure portal. So let's wait some time. All right, so there is a neat button, get function URI. I'm going to copy that. And as you can see, there is like different things you can copy like the master or default host key, but I'm going to go with default key. And I'm going to paste it here. So this is the URI that helps us to trigger our uh, service function. 
with this payload. And as you recall before, we were using this payload as for the testing purposes to actually get the Stripe email, Stripe token, and Stripe amount. And uh, however, this is not created, so let's add it as uh, some parameters to our constructor. So let's create a Stripe email, and we are going to use um, test at. For testing purposes, it doesn't matter uh, if this should be valid or not valid. We're just going to test the whole integration. And I'm going to, again, to save some time, we, of course, might need to create uh, some kind of a form where we're going to uh, show our, for example, item that we would like to purchase and the amount that can be configurable. Just to save some time, uh, let's just hard code it here in the constructor because it's not really, uh, 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 vital to have this form, we just need to show the integration at all. And the headers remains the same. And on the completion, we're going to set state to completed true, so that next time when we are going to um, actually render something, we would like to um, uh, notify the user that the purchase was successful. So instead of this uh, form, let's render something uh, depending on the state of our component. And let's uh, let's get with the if. So if this and state is uh, complete, uh, let's just return um, maybe h element and let's just give a nice message to the user that the purchase uh, was actually purchase completed. And we also need to define this in our state. So let's do it uh, quickly. So um, in our constructor, after the super indication, we're going to create a state and we're going to initialize it with uh, two properties. One is complete, which is set to false of course, and I have some typo here. And failed, which will signify that, right, there was some failed operation and we're going to uh, use it here. Uh, upon any error, we're going to set our state to failed. And let's add one more condition here, uh, just to check if we have a failed state, purchased, uh, failed. All right, uh, can you read me over? Uh, I'm still there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, we can. All right, all right, all right, right. That's great. Uh, right, so I believe that this is pretty much it. Um, so we have total, we have Stripe account, and we have our state, which is changed. Right, I believe that this is the time when we can actually try to reload our page. Yes. So. It was not started. Um, and start. Loading. Right, some errors. Um, so uh, something is wrongly here. You should wrap it in curly braces and maybe use the turner right here because it won't work that way. You can't return several elements without a fragment. Mm -hmm. So you mean, uh, okay, so that was this. Uh, so we about. So to you can open curly braces and start with a turner operator which will check for if state is complete and it will return purchase complete, otherwise it will return purchase or fail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, okay, so return. I'm just thinking that uh, maybe I haven't put it in the right place, just because it should actually work smoothly. Uh, maybe not calibrated by double quotes. Right, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, again, something is unexpected token. So 
I cannot return this. Okay, just give me a second. I will check my masterpiece. Um, so that was... If you want to do it with an if, you can just move it out of return statement and leave it in the render function. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I think that it should be like this. Yeah, but we should not put it in double quotes. It should, yeah, because this is G6, yeah. Um, right, and, but that was for the failed. Okay, let's just check if that access is not defined. All right, that's good. Import access from our access. All right, yeah, so yeah, thank you. So you actually know my application better than me, I believe. Um, so if state is uh, complete and we save it. So let's just purchase completed. And yeah, so thank you for your help. All right, so let's uh, try it out and so, okay, so our goal is to actually put uh, some uh, valid information and then the flow should go to our Azure service to trigger our HTTP uh, service function with the payload that we provide here. And then by eventually it should also leave the um, output here in our Stripe API dashboard and actually lock these events. So let's cross the fingers. And let's try it out. So as always, this test uh, information for the credit card and zip, totally optional. And yeah, so let's actually. Um, all right, so there was like some delay, but purchase is completed and um, we can go and check the dashboard actually. So. Right, so there was some charge error and this is a quite a good unique opportunity to debug it. Um, all right, so it seems like it recognizes it as a sense. So let's uh, change the amount to be something higher. And actually let's try this value. And again, um, let's go to our React application. It was already reloaded and let's try it out. Right, I'm going to. So as you can see, it was uh, sending post request for the token. It obtained the token and then it tried to trigger uh, the post. Uh, actually, it's just uh, first it evaluates and it investigate what are the options. And then it, okay, I'm ready to go with the post because it's allowed. And this is amount that we're going to charge and it was completed, so let's check out our dashboard again. I'm going to click here. Right, so that was successful. And our customer was charged for this amount of money and we should receive them as a payment. Of course, <laughs> uh, it's a test date, so we are not going to receive this, uh, unfortunately, 500 uh, US dollars, but um, this is actually the evidence that our application works well and fine. So it goes from React application back to the uh, serverless function and back to the Stripe API. And uh, at this point of time, I believe that we reached the end of our demo, I'm sorry. So there was a Stripe communicating through the access, uh, actually React through the access to the Stripe API. And uh, I believe that it is, a great point to talk about some ideas and improvements and actually make some conclusions, of course. Um, so the conclusions is that uh, right now we have learned how to build and make the serverless function. Uh, we also host it on the uh, GitHub and we then use integration uh, to actually fetch those sources and uh, through the deployment center and uh, we set up a checkout form using React.js uh, application, a stable connection to the service function and handle our payment. So oh, that was uh, a lot. And finally, 
as I would say that that was a pretty contrived example because we haven't we just scratched the surface about how to integrate all these parties but we haven't included any testing of course and this might be something that we need to improve in the future uh, we have built just a simple components not even containers and we haven't built our dist folder uh, we haven't used the stripe real keys it was all only for the testing purposes and actually on the stripe dashboard uh, you have to activate your account first to be able to accept the payments and to activate account you have to provide your phone number and confirm it i haven't done it specifically on the purpose because i just want to stick to test data so i will not charge anyone by mistake and i believe it, it will be securely handled by the stripe api and uh, yeah so unfortunately um, uh, my experience is that Sometimes there is a pretty long lag and latency is too uh, high for the uh, Azure service. So we might also try to consider another GCP, uh, like another cloud service like Google Cloud Platform or AWS Web Services, uh, which also has this uh, serverless functionality embedded um, there. And, uh, but overall that was a I, I believe it was interesting experience for you uh, to go along with me with this demo application. And I would like to sincerely share some useful links. So there is a Stripe uh, rice, uh, recipes for the uh, elements on the React app. So we have been talking about this previously. Uh, let's just open it. So there are good, uh, uh, like, uh, guides uh, from this page, from these docs. And actually we have been following whatever was written here for the uh, front-end application for the React with some additions. Um, so here they are using the Express and Node.js application. We have been using instead uh, the Azure uh, Cloud uh, with App Service. And also another resource is great thing on the CSS tricks is a great in view JS application using the service checkout, which uh, was like my presentation was based partially on this resource. Also, there is uh, another great link, unified, unified payment, um, different types of payment actually that can be uh, uh, processed with the Stripe API by Max uh, Lay. And there is a quick start with the Stripe uh, with the Stripe elements, and also there is a documentation for the Azure function, which I really recommend to check because overall the Azure function is pretty good service to use. And I believe that this is it for me. So thank you for your attention, and it, I will be more than grateful to answer to your questions if there is any. So now it's your time to to ask. To your opinion, what are the common security requirements when dealing with uh, card holder sensitive data? Yeah, so there are, yeah, that's a great question. And right now uh, I see a really interesting in the industry at all to have the uh, DLP solutions like data loss prevention solutions. Uh, they some, some, some of them are domestic, some of them are like uh, external services. Um, so there is a compliant agreement, I believe from the Stripe API. So uh, Stripe secure payment. Uh, best practices, probably. So there is already a great uh, source of truth on their documentations. Uh, so I believe it's worth to read. But uh, again, I see right now a need to create some uh, internal services, for example, for DLP data loss prevention that might uh, just search for the sensitive data that you pass along from the customer to your service or even in the logs just to wipe it out. And in fact, on our project, we are already using some uh, of the services which are written by ourselves in Python for the data loss prevention speci specifically. Thank you. All oh, right. Yeah. Thank. Thank you for your question. That's a really great, great, great question because we have seen that a lot of companies are right now really caring about their securities and try to provide these best practices.
uh, maybe um, more questions. All right. If not, I uh, really thank you for your time. And uh, I believe, uh, Zhenya, you can take over and I'm going to stop my sharing.